All right, might not look like much, but we're gonna be pulling out the engine this week. Putting the new engine in there. I'm gonna bust my eyes for good. This is the situation we got going on. I do got some water in there. You can feel it when I stuck my screwdriver in there. It's like frozen, so I'm gonna have to put a bucket in there, leave that drain off for a couple of days. So when it gets hot, you can um, drain out. This is the brand new caulker that I got. Brand caulker, you know what I'm saying? It looks way better. And this is the old one. This is the one that people use a lot of time. Don't use them. They're not using. It was good when I first bought it, but then like when you when you have to start draining stuff, this piece right here. This, the, the butterfly kept spinning, so you couldn't, you wasn't able to um to loosen it. So that's garbage. Brand new ones going in. All right, look at that. Brand new drains in there. Even looks better. Nice part about this one compared to oh, well, compared to the other one. Is this whole thing comes out? Whole thing comes out. Has a little O ring on there. So in the future, if you need to do something, or if it leaks, all you have to do is just replace that O ring. That's it. And then you take this, screw it back in there. I said done. I'm gonna leave this loose for a couple of days. Well, maybe for about a week. And just let that water drain out completely. See if I find a bucket here and um so I can put the bucket in there so it can drain out in there. So I imagine there's not much water in there, but I do got a drain pan, so in the next couple of days when it gets hot outside, it can drain out on its own and it just drain it there. See after the last time I drained this, well, when I was able to get it open. It's probably about almost eight months ago. So let's do this. All right, another thing we're going to be doing is I took the 10 millimeter out of this pillar. It's nice and loose, ready to come out. I'm going to drill the hole for gauge part number three. So I'm thinking gauge part number three. Probably going to sit right around here. I'm waiting for the other gauge parts to come in. So I can make it look just like these. This one right here is for oil pressure. This is the oil pressure on there. And I like it because it's just like the other ones. It's going to have those those um lights on top that light up. So that's going to be good. So now I'm going to have three gauges. The other gauge part should be on Monday. This is an oil pressure sensor. Like I said, I'm gonna show you guys how to, how how you mount this on one of these cars, but pretty much every car is pretty much the same. Yeah, so this is hotter on top, so you can't take that nut out of there. I don't think so. And this is gonna use like a speaker style terminal. And there, I believe that's the power and the instructions to say that this right, this base right here is the ground. But I want to double check. So put that there. And I'm doing this today. I'm doing this maybe Monday or Tuesday when it when it, when the gauge biopsy comes in. But that's for the oil pressure sensor. These are easy. I know where these go. This is pretty simple. That and all that goes as well. Well, you don't have to put that. You don't have to put that to the back of the battery. You can um, choose any ground that's near the area that you're going to be running it to, which is the way I have it. And you see right here, it says green wire. It says it goes to the top post, and then as far as the per instructions say, 
it looks like the base itself is the ground, which is a good thing because I don't have to run extra ground, so I'm only going to run in power. But I'm going to go online and double check with the server just to make sure. And my other one, I'm going to air gauge, there's two posts on there. One says G on it, and the other one, I forgot what it said, but I had two posts on there. One's a ground, one's a power. This one's set up a little differently. So I'm going to go online and double check my reference, but I said we're ready. Like I said, when a new engine comes in, I'll show you guys a new engine. Gets big up and running again. At least let it loose for now. I was going to start drilling a hole for the wire, but I don't want to do that yet until I know the position of the gauge and where I want to sit it. Yep, that's it. She's ready. And I believe... The one that I ordered, I think it's this style right here. These are two different styles. This is the one I got from AutoZone. I think that was like four, like a $40 one I got from AutoZone. This right here was a $10 one. Not much of a difference. The only difference is, is that this one right here is textured. And then this one right here is smooth so you can paint it. But nobody's really... No one's really going to notice now when I get a chance. I'm take the screw, paint it black so you can't see it like I did that one right there. You can't see it, but it's painted black. So I'm going to paint that one black. Then down, if I can find a black screw, I'm going to put it right there. But it's going to be nice because now we're going to have three gauges set up. They're all going to be fully functional, fully working, and good to go. All right, YouTube. See you on Monday. All right, YouTube. This is what we got going on. See the wires already ran for the gauge pod. Had trouble putting in the gauge pod. Because I tightened up the screw too tight. Look at that. Broke it. Not even reusable. So what I did was I bought three brand new ones. So those two are coming out. Just so that everything matches the same. The ones that I got, they're more flush, and I don't have to cut them at all. So, my one right there, my one right here, my the last one down there. Engine's coming in today. Just so you guys know, what I do is, it's a fuse box. Don't mind the rest of the wires, but... This is what I use. So I split the power in between the fuses. And I don't tie a fuse. Well, I don't tie a wire and stick it in the fuse. So if anything happens in the future, if I blow a fuse, it's going to blow the one that I'm throwing the power off of and not the one that I'm getting the power from. So I, I get this on eBay. The only thing I got to hook from now is the ground. Uh, once I get, find the ring terminal, that's going to go to here like that. The green one goes through the firewall, which I already have a hole in the firewall, which is a good thing. So, as per looking at the YouTube videos, so the way this works is, so the whole casing is the ground. And then the only thing you're hooking up is, you got like a speaker terminal type of thing, type of deal. You put that on this right here, and that's it. And this is a quarter inch. Uh, I'm waiting for my quarter inch adapters to come in so that hopefully tomorrow or Friday I can mount that to the engine block before putting the engine inside because it's going to be a lot easier. Just in case if you guys want to know whether oil pressure switch is at. So you can't see it because the wiring harness is in the way. But that's the oil filter housing right there. And if you get a little bit more down on that, I don't know if you guys can see it. Right there underneath. Yep. So that little doodad right there is an oil pressure switch. So that's why I'm going to be running the fracting one off of and the aftermarket one. Alright, you guys can thank me later.
All right, you too, just not waking up. About to get outside in a minute, work on my car. The engine comes in today at 12. I'm also waiting for my spacers. They come in today so I can put those on. Um, I gotta go outside and swap out that O2 sensor, being that it's gonna be easier. That the engine's not in the car right now, so I gotta do that today. I gotta swap over the motor mounts so the brand new motor mounts. Uh, another thing I'm gonna be doing today, as soon as the engine comes in, and my T fittings come in today as well, I'm gonna mount the switch for the oil pressure. And then I think tomorrow, my gauge pods should be here. So I'm gonna install those. And my main plan and goal is to have the car up and running by Monday so that I can start driving it and then I can return the car that I'm using. So um, let me get ready, let me get dressed. And next video you guys are gonna see in a few minutes is me outside. Let's do this. All right, so let's backtrack on these right here. So these are my SMC check valves. SMC. These are the upgraded numbers. Well, the upgraded check valve, that's the number right there. Just in case you want to order one. These are 3 8 they come in 3 8 and they come half inch. They don't come in a quarter. So you can see there's a piston in there. There's an oil ring, you can see a little bit of grease in there from when I greased it. And there's little holes on the side, that's where the air comes out of. And if it looks a little closer. You can kind of sort of see a spring in there. Anyways, camera's not going to focus, but there is a, there you go, yep. Springs in the bottom. And then the top, that's the top part of the piston. I grease it up. These, you can um, rebuild them. These do so rebuild kits, but for me, it was just easier just to replace them. This one, I came for a spare. So if these four Phillips come off, that separates. There's no gasket in between here, so it just separates. And then in there is a metal O-ring. Well, not even metal, it's copper. And then in between that is a rubber seal. So the way this works is it mounts this way so the air... So the compressor hooks up here, the air comes out of that side. And it's like a little plastic piston in there, so when that air gets forced upon, it pushes the piston open, which allows the air to go through. So on this one, the reason why I was leaking, I don't know if you can see it, but I did, I did take this apart. One of the screws had broken ahead of being all corroded. But I was able to take it out. So these are the Phillips. I don't know if you can see the piston in there. Like after I took the stop off. I tried to get the piston to move. But the piston was frozen in there. They didn't even want to come out. Because of how corroded it was. So it's um, seized in there. And what happened is that when it seized. It left the valve open. So because the valve was open. It was allowing the air to pass through, which is going back into the valve, into the compressor, and it was coming out the filter, but I wouldn't have known that until I took it apart. So a lot of times, if you get a leak and you can't find it, and if it's one of those impossible leaks, 100% uh, of the time, it's going to be a check valve. So I already showed you guys the two brand new ones, so this one's going to be junk, but I'm going to save it so that I can show people what a frozen one looks like. This one's still good. I greased it up and everything, so it moves perfectly fine. So this one I'm gonna save for a spare. Just in case. Alright, you see the difference when I order a motor? Look at that almost brand new. More dirt on it, the body body looks brand new. Everything clean, spotless. And then this is the motor that the dickhead got me. Look how dirty that is. Look how filthy that is. Huh. 
Let me pause that clean. It's not even clean. Look at that. I cleaned up what I could. Everything almost looks brand new. Whatever so greasy, I don't really care because you're not really going to see that. But if I have to, and then get the car running, I'll go. I'll take my power washer and just get everything a good cleaning. But after everything, that big wiring harness is going to come out. Don't know how, but it's going to come out the car. Because the new engine has the harness already attached, and then for the oil pressure switch, then I actually have the fucking broken dipstick. Luckily, the one in my car is still good. Look at that oil filter housing, brand new. And then, bear with me here. That's the oil pressure switch right there. But I'm also noticing, if you look under here, oh, you have to look under here with you guys. Can't see shit. So, yep. So those two plugs right there, I'm gonna take one of those out and screw the sensor onto there. It'll be good.